I get animated to engage this argument. You will too, once you're fully informed and digest all this stuff. It's not hard, but let's go, go. The point of critical race theory originally- First of all, even the cryon is wrong, that she coined the phrase critical race theory. No, she didn't. She certainly did not. She coined the word intersectionality. Big deal, by the way. Oh, wow, she coined that word intersectionality. Oh, Einstein we have. No, but critical race theory predates her promotion of intersectionality. Anyway, go ahead. Was to think and talk about how law contributed to the subordinate status of African Americans, of indigenous people, and of an entire uh, group of people who were, were coming to our shores uh, from from Asia. Um, and the point was, quite frankly, to understand the problem in order to intervene in it, to understand why the greatest. Uh, uh, hopes for our republic were not being realized, even though these hopes were- She's being so dishonest and ambiguous. I've read your stuff. I know who you are. I know what you're promoting. This is so far nebulous pablum. We need to know who we are. We need to know what the problem is so we can fix it. Does anyone have a problem with that? No, of course not. That's not what she promotes. What happened to the white dominated society? What happened to systemic white racism that cannot be resolved? What happened to the question about Marxism? She didn't say no, because she can't say no, because she would be revealed as a liar. And I don't know if she's a Marxist or not, but I would think one has to be to promote this ideology. This ideology was born of Marxism from a Marxist, then a group of Marxists. It was pushed in law schools, called critical theory. Then it became critical race theory. We know. I've got the entire lineage right here in American Marxism, and she's part of it. Go. Coded in law. So critical race theory just inherits the uh, beliefs and the hopes of Frederick Douglass, of, of Martin Luther no, King. No, it does not, of Frederick Douglass or Martin Luther King. That is a bald-faced lie that besmirches both of those great men. They reject a colorblind society. Who spoke those words? They reject judging people by, the, by their character, the content of their character. Who spoke those words? Martin Luther King. They reject Frederick Douglass, who became a dear friend of Abraham Lincoln. They reject Abraham Lincoln. So this is a lie she knows it's a lie. She's throwing out those names to try and mainstream critical race theory. And by God, I'm going to be here and everywhere to counter this. Because now, now that they're getting entrenched, now they're going to lie about their agenda. How can they lie about it? When we know who wrote it, when we read the materials, when we understand what's taking place, they're not having discussions about race. They're not having discussions about slavery and segregation. They are accusing white people today of being irredeemably racist as a result of the color of their skin. They are little Louis Farrakhans and Louise Farrakhans. That's what they are. That's what they're promoting. A sickening, poisonous ideology that is destructive to everybody. Black, white, and in between. Go ahead. Who basically want the law to do for the freed people what the law did for enslavers. And we picked that up in the 70s and 80s after the civil rights movement to say, okay, so now we've had this big civil rights movement. We have all these laws in the books, um, but things really aren't looking as different as they should. Stop. She's close. But unless you studied her in this, you won't know. They denounce the civil rights movement as a joke. You hear what she's saying? She's trying to put a patina of scholarship around it. We got these laws, but they're really not doing anything. What she's saying is, we have got to overthrow this society. These laws don't get us where we need to be. And until white people and their whiteness is addressed, that is, until the society is degraded and diminished, if not destroyed. We're never going to get, as a society, the promised land. Go ahead.
We are really the society that we say we are. So we put about the, the task of understanding how law wasn't just the neutral referee. Um, law wasn't always on our side. In fact, law was less on our side. This is than very important because critical theory started in law schools. The view is that the law is biased and it can't help but be biased because the dominant society is in charge of making and enforcing the law. It wasn't so much about race then. It was about the law, using the law to discriminate against people, using the law to advance a, a capitalist agenda, using the law to, to defend the existing society and so forth. It was more generalized. And then it was picked up by the likes of a guy named Derek Bell, first at Stanford and then at Harvard. And he took it as a law professor and pushed it as a racist ideology. For more, sign up for Levin TV.